So guys, welcome back to the channel. And on today we're talking about the newest franchise from Reebok, the Float Zig series. This is the Reebok Float Zig 1. And before I get into the review, I've just got to tell you that this is something you're going to want to take a closer look at. Let's get into it. Okay, my friends, full disclosure, Reebok was good enough to send me the Float Zig 1 for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me for this and they haven't told me what to say and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. And of course, Reebok isn't going to get a chance to see this video before you do here on YouTube. I've had the Float Zig 1 for a little while. It was announced back at TRE at the end of 2023 and then I received my pair shortly after that. So I've been running in the Float Zig 1 for months before bringing you this review, which is actually pretty good for you because I am jumping straight in with a long-term review. First of all, the Float Zig 1 will cost you $130, an absolutely solid price. And I can't wait for you guys in the UK to tell me what you can pick this up for. It always seems like my friends in the UK can pick up any pair of Reebok shoes for a song, or at least less than we can get them here in the US. But I'll be right up front, $130 is a good price for this shoe. You're getting a lot for that money. So let's dig into some specs. Oh, and this will be available in April, 2024. So as far as specs goes, we have 31 millimeters in the heel, 25 in the forefoot for a six millimeter drop. First of all, I like where Reebok is going with this six millimeter drop. Now Reebok claims that a US men's size nine will tip the scale at 9.8 ounces or 278 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 12, it tips the scale at 11.3 ounces or 321 grams. So all in all, not heavy. Like it's certainly not of light. It's not a race day shoe. We wouldn't expect that from a daily trainer, but they're keeping the weight down. I like it. Now, for those of you that have watched my videos before and you've been paying attention to the size shoes I wear, you might've picked up on that I'm wearing a US men's size 12 in this shoe. And this has been the way for every Reebok shoe that I've worn over the last four or five years, at least since I started this channel. I found that when I went to my normal US men's size 13, it was just a little long. And when I dropped it down a full size, the shoes just seemed to fit me a lot better. So keep that in mind. And if you have running Reebok shoes before, I'd love to hear your experience with how the sizing works for you. But for me, I am a full size down than most other brands. I mean, not all brands. I do have to drop down half a size in Hoka and a full size in Solomon. But for all the other brands, I generally wear a US men's size 13. Anyway, let's get started with appearance. Look at this. What do you think when you see this? At least to me, this sticks out as like 90s design styling and I'm totally here for it. And this colorway particularly with the turquoise, it really reminds me of like Miami Vice or something like that. Also, when I look at this shoe, it brings me right back to when I was a kid and I had a pair of Reebok pumps. I don't know what it is, but it just reminded me of it. But here's the deal. When I then went and looked up what a pair of Reebok pumps looks like and the colors associated with Miami Vice, the shoe doesn't really match either, but it does give off those vibes. So I'm gonna stick with it. Also, if Reebok would ever bring back those pumps from the 90s, you better believe I would be all over them. I think the whole pump system would add a little too much weight in a pair of running shoes. I think I'm just remembering how cool I felt wearing a pair of Reebok pumps. Anyway, totally getting off topic. Back to the Float Zig 1. Let's start at the top and work our way down. All right, this, remember, this is a daily trainer. It is built like a daily trainer, but it's not over the top. Reebok isn't bashing you over the head and putting so much padding in that it just adds so much unnecessary weight. We have a very nice amount of padding around the heel collar and the padding around the heel collar, it's very targeted. So let me, let me hold this up and show you. Right here is where the thicker padding kind of ends. So it has a thicker amount of padding from about here, coming all the way around the heel to about here. When I push down, yeah, there is a, there's a pretty solid heel counter in there. I didn't experience any heel slip, but this targeted padding right around the heel just, it grips the back of my ankle nicely. And the Float Zig 1 really has a lovely step in feel. The upper is an engineered mesh. Now there are a lot of overlays on this shoe. The Float Zig 1 has these reinforced midfoot panels, which help give the upper just a little structure so it keeps it standing up and then when you cinch the laces down it gives you a good lockdown across your midfoot and they've included lots of reflective elements just all around the shoe so hopefully that's going to add to some safety features we have a line coming down the back and then there's some reflective elements coming around the side of the shoe on these overlays it's good i mean i wouldn't want to go out without any lights and just run in the middle of the road hoping these shoes are going to reflect enough for a car to see you but it certainly can't hurt to have little extra safety elements built in i like what reebok has done with the tongue mainly because recently i've been running into a lot of shoes that have a very thick tongue and I'm just not really a fan of those super thick tongues on daily trainers but this is a nicely padded tongue it's not too much it's not too little the tongue does a good job of doing what tongues do and it takes the pressure off the top of your foot when the laces are cinched down now there is a lace loop right here in the middle so it's holding that tongue in place and the tongue is also gusseted but it's not just a regular gusset where there is just a small piece of material that attaches to the side of the tongue and then comes down and attaches to the bottom of the upper it's almost like a gusseted booty so the gusset of the tongue starts about here and it comes down 
around, but then it follows all the way around. So the tongue gusset is kind of built in to the lower layer of the upper. So this is a dual layer engineered mesh, but this is a fairly thick weave on this top one that you can see. So you can't see the lower part, it's turquoise beneath it. So basically the tongue is gusseted, but in reality, you're kind of putting your foot into a booty, although it's not noticeable the way you put your foot into some knit upper shoes where it really feels like you're putting your foot into a sock. This just feels like a normal shoe with a lot of control of the tongue, which is exactly what we want. The laces are good, really nothing to speak about. They tie, I think they are an appropriate length. They're not too long, they're not too short. They're exactly what we want in a pair of laces. As in, I really don't want to talk to you about the laces because generally if I do, it's because they're not good. These work just fine. They never came untied. And they weren't too long that when I tie them, they're still like flapping around everywhere. It's a good lace length. Now Reebok says that the upper is made with a minimum of 30% recycled materials. So it's always good to see companies doing what they can to use recycled materials to make a more sustainable shoe. And then when we come down to the midsole, this is really what the story is all about, which admittedly that's what it is in most shoes. And really what sticks out is this pattern. This is their iconic zig pattern. Now the foam is what Reebok has used in a lot of other shoes. It's their float ride energy foam. It's a TPU foam. But even though it is the same foam that they've used in other shoes, this zig pattern that they've cut into the shoe helps the shoe feel softer, more responsive, at least softer and more responsive than the float ride energy series that I have been running in for the last four or five years. Now honestly, I don't know if this zig pattern in the float ride energy foam makes that bigger difference. If I found out later that Reebok actually tweaked the formulation of this float ride energy foam, I wouldn't be surprised because last year, Last year when I was running in the Float Ride Energy 5, I kind of thought the ride was a little firm. And to me, the difference between the Float Ride Energy 5 and the Float Zig 1 is night and day. The Float Zig 1 is beautifully soft, but not too soft. And it is a daily trainer, so we're not talking race day shoe. So when I say responsive, I don't want you thinking like a carbon plated responsive shoe where it's throwing you forward. A daily trainer just isn't gonna be like that. But for a daily trainer, the Float Zig 1, or I should say the Float Ride Energy foam in the Float Zig 1 is actually surprisingly responsive. And I've been really happy choosing this shoe to take it out and then I had a longer testing period to really get my thoughts in line. And I've actually run a lot of long runs in the Float Zig 1. And for me, the Float Zig 1 gives me exactly what I'm looking for when I'm going out for a long run at an easy pace. Now, I'd love to hear from you, but sometimes when we're training in daily trainers, sometimes they can be a little heavy, a little clunky. And then when you're getting hours into your run, they don't always feel as good as when you're totally fresh at the beginning. I didn't find that with the Float Zig 1. The shoe felt just as good at the end of my run as it did in the beginning. I never felt that the Float Zig one wasn't giving me the same protection at the end of my run as it did in the beginning. Does that make sense? Like I think it can stand up to a lot of punishment. Now speaking of putting up with a lot of punishment, Reebok is using a full length carbon rubber outsole. Now here's a complaint that I have because well it's not a complaint but maybe a suggestion for next year but there seems to be a lot of outsole rubber on this shoe and of course I'm not a shoe designer but I don't really see why Reebok couldn't just eliminate some of this rubber to lower the weight just a little bit more. We do have this nice big cutout from the midfoot down to the heel and if I hold it up you can see the float zig patterns. I mean, can you see that? You can actually see right through these holes. They go all the way through. So now that I'm actually looking at it now and talking to you, perhaps this carbon rubber outsole is giving a little structure to the midsole. So I don't know, maybe this much rubber on the outsole is actually needed. And the shoe really isn't that heavy. But either way, this carbon rubber on the Float Zig 1 is standing up to a lot of punishment. Now I can definitely see where here on the forefoot and on this lateral heel edge, it's definitely wearing down. But my friends, this shoe is going to last you, which again, just makes the value even better at $130, you are definitely going to be able to put your full 400 miles into this shoe without wearing it down. And at least with my experience up until now, I don't see the midsole degrading at all during the life of this shoe. Oh, I know, I've got another complaint. People always love complaints, I think. But you see this float zig pattern with the rubber on the bottom where that makes these big voids coming through. I did find that when I was running on sand or when I was running in a little bit of mud or even just grass and mud, not even that I thought was muddy or grassy at the time, these big voids in the middle were like magnets for all that dirt. Now I did take it running on the beach a couple of times and I would get sand packed in there and it was very difficult to get it out. It wouldn't clear itself. So I know I'm speaking like this is some kind of unsolvable problem. It's really not. When I came home after I had been running in a sandy or muddy or grassy area. I did just take the hose to it out back and I kind of just ran some water through these voids and it just flushed everything out and made them nice and clean. In fact, I had to do that this morning before I sat down to make this video. Anyway, what do you think? I am pretty sure that this design choice is not going to appeal to everyone, but I would love to know what you think of the aesthetics of the shoe. What do you think of the float zig design? Have you ever run in a Reebok shoe before? If you have run in a Reebok shoe before, especially like the float ride series, I definitely recommend that you pick up a pair of the float zig one. Ultimately, 
personally, I think it's just better. And that may come back to bite me because I'm not actually sure if Reebok is continuing with the Float Ride Energy line or the Float Zig is replacing it. But if I had the choice of any of the Float Ride series or the Float Zig one, I'm definitely choosing the Float Zig one. This is a solid shoe. And for $130, yeah, this is definitely worth it. All right, guys, hit me up in the comments with all your questions, comments, thoughts about the Float Zig one or anything in life. And for now, it's Matt B. This has been my review of the Reebok Float Zig one. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.